Summary of a Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers Eggers is 21 years old and lives in Lake Forest, Illinois while watching his mother pass away from stomach cancer. She has had many operations and is now in a very bad way. She has chosen that she never wants to go back to the hospital again. While she is lying on the couch watching TV, Eggers and his sister Beth try to meet her needs and take care of his seven-year-old brother Toph. Toph tries to stay out of the way by spending most of his time playing video games in the basement. It seems that Eggers' father passed away just a few weeks ago. He had cancer too, but it came on much more quickly and got worse quickly, killing him one morning without notice. The doctor who is treating Eggers' mother has told the family that she must not bleed at all. Because she has few white blood cells, even a small cut could kill her. On New Year's Eve, as Eggers and his mother watch TV together, his mother gets a nosebleed that they can't stop. He tries not to worry about the fact that things could get worse quickly by pinching her nose. Worse, he and Beth have said they won't take her back to the hospital. Soon, though, it's clear that her nosebleed isn't going to stop, so Eggers and Beth finally convince her to let them take her to the hospital. The whole family goes to the emergency room together, where Eggers' mother stays the night before spending a day in special care. After this, she rests in a big room that Beth calls the death room. While she sleeps, Beth, Eggers, and Toph lie on a bed next to hers. During this time, Eggers thinks about his father's funeral. He remembers how it felt to listen to the minister speak and how he and his girlfriend, Kirsten, sneaked away later that night to have sex. When Eggers and Beth get back to the present, they remember that the next day is their mother's birthday. The hospital has let Eggers' mother go home. Eggers and Beth hire full-time care at home, but she gets worse quickly anyway. At some point, everything she says sounds like it could be the last thing she says. After a lot of people came to see her and call her, she died while under heavy sedation. Soon after, Eggers and Beth sell the house and most of their furniture and move to Berkeley, California, where Beth starts law school. For the summer, they all rent a house in the hills with a view of the San Francisco Bay. In California, Eggers is mostly in charge of TOEF, but Beth helps out. The two brothers become close, and Eggers makes it his goal to make TOEF's life happy and full of opportunities. He's like a brother and a defender all rolled into one. He drives fast and plays music to let Toph know that they're collecting on what they're owed. We are owed, goddammit, he says, singing at the top of his voice to make sure Toph knows that in this world, in their new world, there will be rocking. Eggers and Toph spend their whole summer having fun. With the money they got from selling the family home and the help Toph gets from the government, they go to the beach every day and throw and catch the frisbee in complicated ways that draw a crowd. By the end of the summer, Eggers has to face the truth. Since they have to move out of their sublet, he learns how hard it is to find cheap housing close to Toph's new school that is also in a good neighborhood. Worse, no one wants to rent to them because they don't look like the kind of renters who are financially stable and responsible. Eggers is so desperate that he finally offers to pay a year's rent up front to live in a small one-story house in a quiet part of Berkeley, and the owner agrees. During this time, Eggers tries to find a good mix between being Toph's guardian and living as a young single man. He and Toph live together as if they were roommates. Their home is messy and not well organized, and they eat in strange and odd ways. Eggers is a good guardian, though. But when he goes to Toph's school for an open house, he feels awkward because all of the parents look at him strangely, trying to figure out how he is related to Toph. Not only is Eggers too young to fit in at school events, but his job as a babysitter also makes it hard for him to make friends. He has a hard time getting away from the house, so he looks forward to his nights out with friends who don't understand what it's like to be busy. Eggers works as a temp around this time and also does private design work. Eventually, he and his friend Moody start Might, a magazine made by and for 20-somethings. The magazine is snarky and makes fun of famous magazines and society. Eggers rents an office space for Might with some of the money he got as a gift. The company, which is growing quickly, puts out calls for interns and writers. 
They are shocked to find that a lot of young people in San Francisco and other places are interested in working for an anti-establishment magazine. While Eggers and Moody are working on Might, the MTV show The Real World comes to San Francisco and puts out a hiring call. Even though Might writes a piece making fun of the show, Eggers wants to be on it. He sends in a tryout tape and, to his surprise, is asked to come in for an interview. When he gets there, a director named Laura sits him down and starts asking him more and more personal questions. Eggers writes up their talk as if it were a record, but it's clear right away that he's not telling the truth. This really isn't a transcript of the interview, is it? At one point, Laura asks out of character and confirms that Eggers is using this interview style as a catch-all for a bunch of anecdotes that would be too awkward to force together any other way. Eggers then goes on to talk about what it was like to grow up in Lake Forest. He talks about his parents' deaths as well as the race and socioeconomic makeup of his neighborhood. Several days later, he finds out that he wasn't chosen for the real world. Even though his story is sad, Laura and her team had already heard many sad stories like it, and they can only have one sad white guy from the suburbs on the show. Even though he was turned down, Eggers ends up on an episode of The Real World because the person who was picked instead of him, Judd, is an artist who sends Might his pictures. They think that if they go on the show, they'll get good press, which is apparently why Eggers wanted to go on in the first place. So, they invite Judd to the office and have him talk about his ideals in front of the cameras. This results in an eight-second clip that is shown all over the country. People who hire Eggers and Moody to do independent design work will pay for Might to move to a bigger office area in the long run. Even though the setting is better, the magazine is still not making money, and Eggers starts to feel down. He says that he never wanted a job, and Might is starting to feel more like work than something he loves doing. Plus, he still has to look out for Toph, which makes it hard for him to be an eager magazine editor. He and Toph will soon leave their current house and move into the city, but this doesn't change how Eggers feels about his job. His personal life is also pretty messed up, and he is constantly reminded of death and bad luck. One reason is that his childhood friend John, who also lives in San Francisco now, is very sad and often thinks about killing himself. One night, John says he's going to take too many pills on purpose, so Eggers runs over and calls the cops, who then call the paramedics, who take John to the hospital to have his stomach pumped. Eggers waits in the hospital hallway and thinks about how he'll write about this experience and if it's right for him to write about someone else's private life. Eggers has to deal with the idea of disaster not only because John tried to kill himself, but also because he starts to pass a kidney stone at work. His friend Shalini takes him to the hospital when people finally see him writhing on the floor. Later, Shalini gets a head injury when she falls off a broken deck. Eggers gets to see her in the hospital and checks on her often while she is in a coma for a long time. Even though she wakes up in the end, she never gets her short-term memory back. Eggers has to face his past because of all of these near-death events, and he starts to feel bad that he and Beth never found their parents' ashes. When he goes back to Lake Forest for a wedding, he chooses to see old friends and places. He ends up at the funeral home where his parents were laid to rest. When he gets there, he asks if they have any papers that might show where his parents' bodies were sent. The young man who works at the funeral home goes downstairs to look, and when he comes back, he is holding a cardboard box with Eggers' mother's ashes in it. Eggers is shocked, so he takes the box and goes to Lake Michigan, where he scatters his mother's ashes in the water while wondering if this is what she would have wanted. After his journey to Illinois, he returns to California and chooses to quit publishing Might and relocate to New York with Toph, who says it's good to move around, see stuff, not get stuck. About the author Dave Eggers grew up outside of Chicago and went to college at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. When he was 21, both of his parents died within five weeks of each other from cancer. Eggers then took care of his younger brother, Toph, who was only seven years old. He moved to Berkeley, California, and worked as an independent graphic designer to support himself. After working as an independent writer and editor for Mike Magazine for a few years, 
Eggers released a heartbreaking work of staggering genius in 2000. It was a big hit and became a bestseller. Since then, Eggers has written a number of books, and more and more of them are about social problems in the United States. He also started the independent publishing house and literary magazine McSweeney's, as well as the Teaching and Writing Center 826 Valencia, which is run by volunteers. He lives with his wife, Vandela Vita, and their children in California. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.